Yeehaw! We'll put some nice counters on you and swing away. Oh my goodness, here we go. This is actually working. Okay. 6-6. Six, six. Woo! You got one turn to beat us here. Can they stop us? They got another get loss, but this time we'll Tamiyo safekeeping. Do you have an answer, opponent? They don't. Oh, <laughs> yes! We got there! Wow, that was really quick! Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, this is actually a mechanic that I totally forgot about was in Thunder Junction in the early part of the preview season. But now that we've had a chance to play around with it, it's actually a hilariously awesome mechanic that I honestly think that everyone should give a try at least once. So without further ado, throw on your best cowboy hat, everyone, and mount up your favorite creature because it is time to saddle up. <laughs> Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So our saddle up deck is a Selesnya deck rocking white and green. We're looking at an average mana curve about 2.0. We are looking at 20 creatures in the deck, four instants, six sorceries, six artifacts, four enchantments, and only 20 lands. In all honesty, this deck actually never popped into my head until I kind of got wrecked, as you can see from the gameplay footage here from another deck as I was putting something together. And I kind of recorded this and realized, hey, the mechanic is actually a lot more awesome than I thought it was. So, starting in the two drop slots, and we don't have any one drops, we're going to be talking about, of course, Frontier Seeker here. Really awesome card at ETBs, and helps us dig out either a mount or land for our hand, just to make sure we can fix to what we need. We'll also be utilizing Conclave Mentor here. You'll see again in just a moment why we're going to need this. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. And then finally, we'll also have a new card here from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Miriam Herd Whisper. So we'll talk about this card for just a moment here. Miriam Herd Whisper is a Selesnya card that's a human druid that's a 3-2, and it says, as long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have hexproof. Whenever a mount or vehicle you control attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, as we just mentioned right now, with Conclave Mentor being able to add additional plus one, plus one counters, plus Miriam, we're going to see that many of our creatures are going to get super big very quickly, and it's going to get actually kind of out of control if our opponent does not have an answer to us. As for what are payoffs utilizing these support cards, we're now going to talk about the three drop slots. So with Dover Grizzly here, only two copies of it, but this bear mount basically can be saddled for one, and as long as it is saddled and attacks, we can give trample to all of our creatures. However, the big star of the show is right here, Ornery Tumblewag. So we'll also talk about this card. Ornery Tumblewag is a bushwag mount, and it's a 2-2 that says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Whenever the Tumblewag attacks, while saddled, you double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature and it needs to be saddled for two whoo so thankfully all of our creatures in our deck have at least a minimum of two power so this is very easy for us to saddle but of course it's going to get very quickly out of control as i mentioned earlier again if our opponent just lets it resolve but thankfully with miriam's help here it will have hex proof so it is protected at all times while it's our turn and then finally our other three drop is going to be wily duke at in heroes so this human ranger has vigilance since a four two so really solid stats, but it also reads, whenever the hero becomes tapped, you gain one life on draw card. The only awkward part, of course, is it has vigilance, so it actually will never really tap. However, we can use this as a mount target for our creatures that need to be saddled in order to make sure we can then gain some life and also draw some cards. So that's mostly why it's in the deck, is just to help us get a little bit more extra value from our creatures. Circling back over to the support package, now we'll go over the one drops. So we do have a lot of ways of getting plus one, plus one counters on things, and also, again, just taking out certain things we need. So in terms of building up all of our plus one, plus one counters, we'll have hardened scales here. It's basically a staple that we definitely need for the deck, which will keep adding an additional one for each time we get at least one plus one, plus one counter on our creatures. Speaking of adding on additional plus one, plus one counters, who try saying that five times fast, we'll also have copies of Homestead Courage here, which will just put simply one, but it also has flashback and vigilance to give to our creatures, which is great for some of our creatures where we need to make sure we protect ourselves on the backswing. Requisition right here is also a really awesome card with flexibility where we can destroy an artifact or an enchantment, or we can put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control, which is really awesome for our deck. And it also has the flexibility of being sprees, so you can basically pay however you like to get everything out of that card. 
will have a slight touch of removal with hard hitting questions. It's a single mana, but also it just allows us to deal damage equal to our power to target creature or planeswalker we don't control, which is really great for us just to pick off certain pesky cards that we just have trouble with. Since we will need additional bit of protection when it's not our turn and Miriam is not out, we'll also have copies of Tamiyo Safekeeping. This not only can protect any of our creatures, but any permanent we control will gain hexproof and indestructible, while we also gain a little life. Don't underestimate that life gain. Sometimes that could mean the difference between surviving a turn or losing a game. On the off chance that our opponent does tend to blow up any of our creatures, we will need to have the Ozolith here. This is a really awesome card to kind of help kind of, I guess you could say bank all of our plus one, plus one counters, and we can reattach them to another creature that we put out on the battlefield at the beginning of combat. And then finally, in the four drop slot, while it is technically a vehicle, it can also be an artifact creature, Untethered Express. This is mostly our backup game plan in case of the Tumblewag ends up getting destroyed. So this is also protected thanks to Miriam's ability, but also when it is crewed for one and it attacks, you get a plus one, plus one counter on it. It's also a four, four vehicle with Trample, which is great for us to ensure that it alone can kind of just do its own extra bit of damage. And imagine all the plus one, plus one counters you can put on this choo-choo train to smash through in case, again, if the Tumblewag can't get it done. Now, as you notice that we already spent what we consider our budget on the main deck here, that leaves us, of course, with the basics when it comes to lands. So that's mostly going to mean some plains, some forests. We're going to utilize Fortified Village here. Remember that, again, in paper, this is a rare, but at least here in Arena, it is an uncommon. So we're going to take advantage of that ability. And then finally, some tapped lands, some Radiant Groves, just to make sure, again, Fortified Village at least can come into play untapped most of the time. As far as your sideboard plan is concerned, mostly here is what we're going to come down to. So for the best of three slot, to slow down those combo decks and control decks, we're going to be utilizing Deathling Silence, also because our deck is a little slow and steady, so we want to make sure we take control of our side of the board. We'll also have some catch-all removal with portable holes here, some seal firm existence for the bigger stuff, and we do need some more extra support. We'll actually have extra copies of Heart Hating Question. We're also going to have some artifact and enchantment hate, mostly for non-creatures with a single copy of Haywire Mod to exile certain things. To do us some more catch-all protection for our whole deck, we'll have Make a Stand here, which also can give us a little extra pump just to make sure we can get in our final extra points of damage. We'll also add in copies of Kutzil, Malament Exemplar. This is also a card that I talked about before, and it's really sweet for us because it turns off our opponent's ability to cast spells during our turn, just to make sure that we can ensure we can just keep control of the board. And finally, a single copy, it's a little spicy, it's going to be Evasion of Moag. This is mostly, again, for the more slower and methodical matches out there, where we can put plus one, plus one counters on each of our creatures, and also if you can flip it, it'll continually keep adding more, again, plus one, plus one counters, while it also has its own protection in Ward 2. But the big question, of course, we need to ask ourselves is, is it possible to mount a bunch of creatures, saddling them up, and doing a bit of extra damage to get to our victory? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Well, there's only one way to find out. So as I just mentioned, let's saddle up this deck and let's see how well it does. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we saddle up our Tumblewag here and get some victories with it? Well, the good news is here, yes, we definitely have exactly what we need to start pumping up our Tumblewag very quickly here. And we also have a backup plan with Untethered Express. So let's go ahead, let's keep this. We may not have our Ozolith, or at least our hardened scales, but I think this should be solid enough for us to get through some early game damage and hopefully be able to close out the win, even with just what we have. All right, so with that, we'll put down Radiant Grow first since we don't have a turn one play. All right, they also have a Razor Verse ticket. Okay, I'm not sure what our opponent's trying to do, but again, hopefully that gives us a small advantage here. We'll put down Miriam, hers Whisper, and then next turn we can get down Tumblewag and we should be able to start doing our thing. Collector's Cage. Okay, interesting. Hideaway 5 on that. I haven't seen anybody play this yet, so we'll see how that turns out for us. Got another Miriam. So that'll be nice for a backup plan. Ornery Tumblewag. Put a counter on Miriam. We swing with Miriam. Down to 16 on our opponent there. Okay, what do you got, opponent? Bring it on. We're shields down, unfortunately, right now for a moment here, so hopefully they don't have removal, but we should be okay. Oh, well... They do have a removal after all, but that's okay. Actually, the maps aren't too shabby for us. So with that, let's put down another Miriam. <laughs> okay, opponent. I don't know how you're going to stop this, but here we go. This is where the fun begins. Saddle up time. Yeehaw! We'll put some nice counters on you and swing away. Oh my goodness, here we go. This is actually working. Okay. 6-6. Six, six. Woo! <laughs> we got down, down to 10 already. All right, opponent. Well, you got one turn to beat us here. Can they stop us? Wow, this deck actually moves pretty quick. We got another get loss, but this time we'll Tamiyo safekeeping. Do you have an answer, opponent? They don't. Oh, <laughs> yes! We got there! 
Wow, that was really quick. Wow, we're just as fast as Slickshot Showoff was. Awesome. That's exactly the power of the deck. Oh man, this is why I love this deck. It's super awesome when everything lines up. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can our deck saddle up and get a win with what we got? Well, actually we can't do that with these lands. That's kind of awkward. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's mulligan. Let's see if maybe we can get a better hand here. Okay, well this is actually pretty solid. So let's go ahead and keep this. And I guess we'll put back a planes. I know that seems a little awkward to do, but with everything we have, we should be able to then go off. We have a Frontier Seeker, so hopefully we can get another planes out of the deal. All right, our opponent played an Elvish Mystic. Ooh, okay, we got a Hardened Skill, so that's actually pretty solid for us. That'd be a great turn one play. We can start putting up all of our counters together. We just need a couple more lands and we should be fine. Snow Covered Forest. Old Growth Troll. Okay, well, our opponent is also going to try to start making big creatures against us. So with that, how do we do this here? I think we'll put down a Plains. Frontier Seeker. We're going to go digging. Okay, well, we did get our Plains. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, opponent. So obviously our opponent is playing a Mono Green Stompy deck. They're going to start swinging at us now, I'm guessing. There they go. We'll take the hit for now. Down to 16. Okay. Got another Miriam. So with that, how do we do this here? Actually, we'll put down the Radiant Grove since we don't have anything else really. Miriam Herd Whisperer coming down. We're getting an easy hit here. I don't think our opponent's going to be blocking with their Elvish Mystics. They need to beat those Mana Dorks. Okay. So the game plan right now is we can get that Untethered Expression. We should be good to start swinging at our opponent. No blocks yet. So this is a little bit too much damage we should be taking here. Ooh. Ooh, okay, okay. Well, that actually helps us out a bit. So, Untethered Express. And then... No attacks yet. Pass the turn. Okay. So, we just need to sponge at least one more hit, and we should be okay. Oh, Railway Ball. Okay, I haven't seen anybody play this yet, but I know it's a pretty powerful card. Okay, Old Growth Troll number two. Let me put some counters down. That's how our opponent's going to try to do their thing. Okay. So, no blocks yet. Down to eight. Ouch. I don't know if we're going to be able to start. They're outdoing us right now with their route Railway Brawler. Okay. Okay, so we'll crew up one on Frontier Seeker. We'll swing here. Put some counters together. Most likely our opponent right here is going to try to block this. Oh, wow. They actually take the hit. Okay. Down to ten. Okay. And then since we're at plus eight, <laughs> we'll be able to hit him right here. Okay, so with that, let's hit Old Growth Troll. Put that out of its misery. They lose it, which is nice for us. And most likely they'll attach it to one of their forests. There we go. Pass here. Okay. Well, we're not dead yet. At least not on board yet. Yes, they do have enough power to get through our stuff. But we do have some Tamiyo safekeeping to kind of sponge a little bit more. Ooh, another Railway Brawler. All right. Well, I mean, they're going to put some counters on it. Yikes. We have to sponge it at least one hit here. All right. So with that, we will block... Cameo safekeeping, protecting our Miriam, and getting a little bit of life. Just sponge some hits here. We're down to three. Oh boy. Okay, come on, deck. Oh, okay. That's not too shabby for us. Okay, so here's how we do this. Turn on our Tethered Express. We will put some counters on it. Put some more counters on it. And then with that, we will then swing. That's a big choo-choo train coming at our opponent here. 16-16. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can our opponent stop that? Wow, they're actually going to have to block it. I don't have a choice. They're down to four. Woo, we closed the gap there very quickly. I don't know if that's going to be enough against us. Okay. Well, we're going to have to see right here. Do you have an answer, opponent? Cavalier Thorns. Ooh, that's a little scary. They could block. Can we actually survive this hit right here? I think we might be able to. Our opponent can't really do much of anything else. Okay, Werewolf Pack Leader. So obviously we're going to swing here. I think we know how to do this. Okay, Untethered Expressed. Crewing it up. We will then block the Railway Brawler. Untethered Express. We don't need to do it on the actual train itself. We just need to sponge the hit. So we're down to one. Wow. Okay. So with this. Oh my goodness, we got hardened scales here. <laughs> Oh my god, this is hilarious. 
Ooh, actually this deck does manage to pull off some really powerful swings out of nowhere. Okay, so with that, did we get our opponent here? Okay, Frontier Seeker, powering up the train. We go swinging here. It's all or nothing now. <laughs> we, got, we got our opponent here. Yes, yes, yes. Woo, choo-choo. We beat our opponent. Wow, we actually got him there? I did not think we were going to win that one. We had no business winning that one, but we did it. Wow, I love this deck. This deck is super, super awesome. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we saddle up a couple of our Tumblewags or any of our other creatures to get to a victory? Well, let's see right here. Okay, so we do have our Hardened Scales, which is great. We do have a Tumblewag in hand with some Drover Grizzlies to help us kind of get there. Oh, and some protection also is actually pretty sweet for us. Even though our lands are a little slow, I think we should be able to get through what we got. So Fortified Village. We will show off a Radiant Grove, and then we'll put down the Hardened Scales. We don't have a turn two play, so this actually kind of oddly enough works out. Right, opponent puts down Hive of the Eye Tyrant. They play Duress. So unfortunately, this does mean that we do lose our Tamiyo safekeeping, but we do get to keep our creatures, which is, I guess, okay. Put down that tap land. Kind of awkward because we had a Frontier Seeker, but that's okay. Black Leaf Cliffs. And opponent plays Blood Tide Harvester. Make a token. All right. Radiant Grove, which means we're still a little slow, but that's okay. Put down our Frontier Seeker. Hopefully we'll dig out. Oh, wow, we whiffed. Well, that's really awkward. That's okay. This is fine, everybody. We still have a way of getting to victory. All right. Tap land for our opponent. That's the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, number two. And our opponent plays Heartless Act. Okay. Unfortunate, but this is okay. I'm going to go swinging. This is fine. Second Conclave Mentor. So, how do we do this here? I think... I want to see what else they have at hand. So we're going to just put down the Grizzly. I don't think they're going to swing. But even so, we still have ways of getting around things here. Blood Tithe Harvester, number two. Make another Blood Token. They go swinging. This time we're going to block. So we get rid of at least one Harvester. Okay, Frontier Seeker is not the worst. So I think we'll play it. Just kind of slowly make our way through this. Come on, deck. Don't fail me. Okay, well, that's actually not too shabby. So, let's see. We'll get the planes. Put down Conclave Mentor, number two. All right. Opponent's got three cards in hand. Okay, so they do actually have another removal spell, which is, again, annoying. But this is fine. We still should be able to get there what we got. We just need to kind of hopefully see what else they have in hand. If they don't have anything else, we should be okay. Oh, wow. Bone Crusher Giant. Well, we gained some life. So, we stabilize just a smidge. On a swing, down to 16. Bone Crusher Giant coming down. Ooh, okay, so Miriam is actually not too shabby here, but we're going to put down Grizzly first. If we can at least get down both Miriam and the Tumble Wag, we should be good. Okay, Pawn's getting a little frisky here. They're hitting us with both creatures, so we're going to block the Giant. They sacrifice a Blood Token, throw away a land, draw a card. Fatal Token. Wow, they actually Fatal Pushed us. All right. Well, at least we avoid the Bone Crusher for a bit. Give me something good here. Okay. Tumblewag number two. So we'll put down the first one that they already know we have. Oh, no. Throw away another land to draw a card. Okay. So. At the very least, this means that Heartless Act can't hit us here too well. We can't afford to take too many hits here. At best, we have a turn and a half to turn this around. I'm going to go swinging here. They eat a card from our graveyard. Again, annoying, but it's not the worst. Oh, man, if we can get at least one more land here, we might be set. Down to six. Oh, boy. This is close. Okay, another tumble wag. Not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. Actually, maybe we should have played tumble wag. Did I mess up there? I hope I didn't. Okay, saddle. Turn our tumble wag. Get a bunch of counters on it. Well, this is unfortunately awkward, everybody. Okay, so I don't think there was a way out of this. They can hide with the Eye Tyrant does. We can block the hits, but we don't have a way of protecting ourselves for a bit longer here. Okay, so, okay. Enough with the <sighs> mysteries. Victory does I not look good right now. I'm just gonna make a sacrifice. Get rid of Miriam, okay. They can swing if they want to, but we definitely can at least block for a bit. They turn on Mutavolt. Okay, that's interesting. They go swinging here. Big swing. So, block the Bone Crusher. Down a... Ow, one. Okay, so... 
Is there any way out of this? I guess we'll see right here. We will mount... Wait, hold on. We gotta make sure we do this right. Okay. Mount our own tumble wag with another tumble wag. Wait, did we do that wrong? Oh no, God! No, <laughs> did we just mess that up? Oh my goodness. Wow. I can't believe I just messed that up right now. I am dumb. Well, I can't believe I just did that right now. Wow. Wow. I'll just let this go. All right, well, that's gonna be a punt, but you know what? If you're watching this in the video, everybody, yeah, I'm gonna leave that in. That was me incorrectly mounting my own creatures here. Don't do what I did, everybody, and make sure to always read your cards before you start doing your thing. And there you have it, everybody. So that was our saddle up deck for you in Explore. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? Truth be told, I'm actually really satisfied with the deck and how it turned out. But let's be clear for one thing here. This is definitely not quite the same as Slickshot Show Off, which is unfortunately the more arguably popular deck in this format. Still, if you're interested in the strategy, and as you saw today, we can still pull off some wins. We're just a little bit slower to get to the finish line, so to speak. Now, having said that, for those of you who stuck around this far in the video, you are my true fiery friends. And as always, because you stuck around this far in the video, you can definitely stick around just a little bit longer because I'm about to show you how you can make this deck even more awesome than it currently is. Now, if you're looking to upgrade the deck, honestly, you indeed don't need to change all that much from the main deck itself. Actually, what I mostly would just do for the actual main part is it's going to be just adding a Sky Sovereign console flagship and just simply trimming down one copy of Ten Tethered Express. The main reason for this is with the flying ability that Sky Sovereign has, you now have a much better option here for swinging at your opponent. But again, we only really need one because it's five mana and we kind of just want to just make sure that we stay well within our mana curve as is. Having said that, of course, the other major upgrades is I know, I know, I know I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. Upgrade your mana base. I can't stress this enough. At the very minimum, just doing that already makes the deck much more solid and much more consistent with its game plan. So obviously this means you'll add in a copy of Ijano, Seed of the Empire, a Beseju, of course. You'll add in some dual lands like the Pathway Lands, some Razor Verge, Thicket, and Temple Garden. We'll also add in one single copy of Crawling Barons as kind of like a backup plan. And the only main reason we want to do this is the card, of course, adds in plus one, plus one counters to the creature land itself. And of course, in our deck, that's actually a pretty sweet option. Now, if you are interested in taking this into best of three, then mostly all you're just going to be trimming down is going to be any of your slower removal and we'll put an instant speed removal with copies of get lost as more of our catch-all game plan here and finally you'll add in some copies of evasion of Gobicon here this will replace your mega stands and these will be a much more better option for you not only because you can peek at your what your opponent's trying to do but also you can flip these and then make these enchantments that will also get plus one plus one counters on your creatures and also can be acted at instant speed removal to then give your whole team ax proof and indestructible if you need that in a pitch Finally, the only other thing is we'll then adjust one of our small little rivets of graveyard hate and we'll put in Lion Sash because again, this also will become a great creature option here that can pump itself up and also gets plus one plus one counters which works very well with how our game plan works but with that out of the way here are my final thoughts that i just want to give on the deck overall i could honestly see as much as i've had fun with mounting creatures and saddling up definitely when it comes to another card <laughs> slick shot show off that's kind of the reason why this strategy was a little bit overlooked only just because while this one can do the same thing as it it's a lot slower however the bigger advantage that this has versus slick shot show off is it's not nearly as fragile so to put it another way, if you are a fan of aggro combo strategies, if you are a fan of one-shotting your opponent out of nowhere, and if you're a fan of playing plus one, plus one counters on a variety of creatures where you can just smash your opponent through while also still maintaining the resiliency that maybe Slickshot Showoff doesn't have, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to throw on a ton of counters to pump up either of your creatures or vehicles, you'll be having a lot of fun doing so, and you'll be very surprised at what it's capable of doing, and you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!